reading through the Bible in a year. November 9th, 2 Kings chapter 22, Hebrews chapter 4, Joel 1, and Psalms 140 through 141. Josiah, good King Josiah, was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adiah of Bozkoth. And he did what was right in the sight of Yahweh, and walked in all the way of his father David, and did not turn aside to the right or to the left. Now it happened in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of Yahweh, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the priest, that he may count the money brought into the house of Yahweh, which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people. And let them, give it into, in, rather, let them give it into the hand of those who do the work, who have the oversight of the house of Yahweh. And let them give it to those who do the work, who are in the house of Yahweh, to repair the damages to the house. To the craftsmen, and the builders, and the masons, and for buying timber and hewn stone to repair the house. Only no accounting shall be made with them for the money given into their hands, for they deal faithfully. Then Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of Yahweh. And Hilkiah gave it to, or gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. Then Shaphan the scribe came to the king and responded to the king with a word, and said, Your servants have poured out uh, the money that was found in the house, and have, fa- uh, rather, and have given it into the hand of those who do the work, and uh, who have oversight of the house of Yahweh. Moreover, Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it in the presence of the king. Now it happened that when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothing. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam the son of Shaphan, Akbor the son of Micaiah, the Shaphan the scribe, and Isaiah the king's servant, saying, Go, and inquire of Yahweh for me and the people, and for all of Judah, concerning the words of this book that have been found. For it is, uh, rather, for great is the wrath of Yahweh, which has set a flame against us, because our fathers have not listened to the words of this book, to do according to all that is written concerning us. So Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Akbor, Shaphan, and Isaiah went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of uh, Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now, she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke to her. And she said to them, saying, Thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, Say to the man who sent you to me, Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I am bringing evil on this place and on its inhabitants, even all the words of the book which uh, the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the work of their hands. Therefore my wrath is set aflame against this place, and it shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of Yahweh, thus you shall say to him, Thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, regarding the words which you have heard, because your heart was soft, And you humbled yourself before Yahweh when you heard what I spoke against this place and against against its inhabitants, that they should become an object of horror and a curse. And you have torn your clothing and wept before me. I truly have heard you, declares Yahweh. Therefore, behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you will be gathered to your grave in peace so your eyes will not see all the evil which I will bring on this place. So they brought back word to the king. Now Hebrews chapter 4. The author of Hebrews continues, Therefore, let us fear, lest, while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have fallen short of it. For indeed, we have, uh, we have had good news proclaimed to us, just as they also. But the word that was heard did not profit those who were not united with faith among those who heard. 
For we who have believed enter that rest, just as he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has spoken somewhere, again, Paul wouldn't say this, but he has spoken somewhere in this way uh, concerning the seventh day, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage, they shall not enter my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly had good news proclaimed to them failed to enter because of disobedience, he again determines a certain day, today, saying through David, after so long a time, just as had been said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works, as God did from his. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall into the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are uncovered and laid bare to the eyes of him uh, to whom we have an account to give. Therefore, since we have such a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us take hold of our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, Joel chapter 1. Since we're in a new book, let's read the introduction. Little is known about the prophet Joel, although his concern for Judah and Jerusalem suggests that he ministered in Judah. Joel told of a locust plague that had struck Israel, which, he said, foreshadowed the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord was a time greatly anticipated by the Israelites because they believed that God would then judge the nations and restore Israel to her former glory. This is what um, they expected Jesus to come ushering in as the conquering king and ruler when Jesus was walking the earth. This is why the, um, uh, the disciples repeatedly asked him, you know, when he's going to come into his glory. And this is why um, uh, John and uh, James, is it James? I'm telling you. He's having trouble remembering things. It happens. Anyway, um, the, 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 uh, the sons of thunder. Um, when they were, uh, when their mother asked of Jesus, that, you know, she would be given her, her request. And he said, what do you want? And she said that my two sons would sit, one at your right and one on your left, when you come into your glory. That's the day of the Lord. That's what they were expecting. Continuing on. Yet, said Joel, God would punish not only the nations, but unfaithful Israel as well. Joel urged everyone to repent and told of a day when God would pour out his Spirit on all flesh. Chapter 2, verse 28. That day arrived on the first Christian Pentecost, Acts 2, 17. While the date of the book is uncertain, 9th to 6th century, 300 years B.C., its message is valid for all time. Let's begin. The word of Yahweh that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel, Hear this, O elders, and give ear, all inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days, or your, or in your father's days? Recount about it to your sons, and let your sons recount about it to their sons, and their sons to the next generation. 
but the gnawing locust has left. The swarming locust has consumed. What the swarming locust has left, the creeping locust has consumed. What the creeping locust has left, the stripping locust has consumed. Awake, drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you wine drinkers, on account of the sweet wine that is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up against my land, mighty and without number. Its teeth are the teeth of a lion, and it is the fangs of a lioness. It has made my vine a desolation, and my fig tree splinters. It has stripped them bare and cast them away. Their branches have become white, wail like a virgin girded with sackcloth. For the bridegroom of her youth, the grain offering and the drink offering are cut off from the house of Yahweh. The priests mourn the ministers of Yahweh. Their field, or rather the field, is destroyed. The land mourns, for the grain is destroyed. The new wine dries up. Fresh oil fails. Be ashamed, O farmers. Wail, O vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley. Because the harvest of the field perishes, the vine dries up and the fig tree fails. The pomegranate and the palm also and the apple tree. All the trees of the field dry up. Indeed. Rejoicing dries up from the sons of men. Gird yourselves with sackcloth and lament, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. And lament, or rather, come, spent the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God. For the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Set apart a fast as holy. Call for a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of Yahweh your God and cry out to Yahweh. Alas, for the day, for the day of Yahweh is near and it will come as destruction from the Almighty. Has not food been cut off before our eyes? Gladness and joy from the house of our God? The seeds shrivel under their clods. The storehouses are desolate. The barns are pulled down, for the grain is dried up. How the beasts groan. Herds of cattle wander aimlessly, because there is no pasture for them. Even the flocks of sheep suffer. To you, O Yahweh, I cry, for fire has consumed the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame has burned up all the trees of the field. Even the beasts of the field pant for you, for the water brooks are dried up. And fire has consumed the pastures of the wilderness. Let's conclude today in Psalms 140 through 141. Rescue me, O Yahweh, from evil men. Guard me from violent men who think up evil things in their hearts. They continually stir up wars. They sharpen their tongues as a serpent. Poison of an an asp is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Yahweh, from the hands of the wicked. Guard me from violent men who thought to rip, or rather to trip up my steps. The proud have hidden a trap for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have spread uh, snare, sorry, they have set snares for me. Selah. I said to Yahweh, You are my God. Give ear, O Yahweh, to the voice of my supplications. O Yahweh, O Lord, uh, strengthen, rather, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Yahweh, the desires of the wicked. Do not promote his evil scheme that they uh, not be exalted. Selah. As for the head of those who surround me, May the trouble from their lips cover them. May burning coals be shaken out upon them. May he cause them to fall in the fire, into bottomless pits from which they can never rise. May a slanderer not be established in the earth. May evil hunt violent man, hunt the violent man speedily. I know that Yahweh will maintain the cause for the afflicted and that rather in judgment for the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name. The upright will
will abide in your presence. Now, Psalm 141. O Yahweh, I call upon you. Hasten to help me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. May my prayer be established as incense before you. The lifting up of my hands as the evening offering. Set a guard, O Yahweh, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice deeds in wickedness with men who are workers of iniquity. And do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous smite me in loving kindness and reprove me. It is oil upon the head. Let my head not refuse it. For still my prayer is against their evil deeds. Their judges are thrown down by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are pleasant. As when one plows and splits open the earth, our bones have been scattered at the mouth of Sheol. For my eyes are toward you, O, o Yahweh, our sorry, O Yahweh, O Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not pour out my soul to death. Keep me from the jaws of the trap which they have set for me, and from the snares of workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets. As for myself, meanwhile, I am passing by. That's all for today. That's all the reading and all the notes. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.